Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're brand new, welcome. I'm super glad to have you. Today is my one year YouTube anniversary. Woohoo! First video was shot in this closet. Not so great, but we won't talk about that. But this has been a really requested video, so this is going to be my closet tour in order to celebrate this anniversary with you. So I'm going to show you sort of how I organize and how I came up with the layout and creation of this closet. It is an attic space, as you can probably tell, and it was just a blank room. So it really wasn't a great use for a bedroom because you really only have this tall space right here. And my husband is a full foot taller than me, so he actually can only stand in part of this closet, but he doesn't go in here as often as I do, so it's okay. I sort of tried to use this space as wisely as possible. He can certainly only walk in this part, he can't walk on the sides, so it's really hard to put any furniture in here or use it really for anything else, and I think it is the perfect shape for a closet. So I'll give you some ideas of how to create a walk-in closet in an attic space, show you how I organize, and show you some of the things I have in my closet. So I'll start with clothes in the back, handbags are in the middle, a little bit more clothes in my vanity, and I will end with shoes. So let's go ahead and get started. So we'll start in the very back of the closet, which is going to be this dresser. This is a full size window, but I've covered it so that the clothes don't get any sun damage or anything like that. And because I don't really need a window in the closet. So I put this dresser back here. I've got some pictures on top. I've got pictures from my honeymoon and my one year anniversary with my husband. And then some just uh, fun places that we went kind of pictures. And then I have this dresser. So it's got five drawers in it. The top two drawers are my underclothes and bathing suits and things like that. Then I've got loungewear and leggings. I have t-shirts and then in the bottom drawer I have sweaters. Foldable sweaters that I want kind of put away. I have um, other hanging sweaters that are more like hoodies in another section. Then as we move into Next this section. come to my dresses section. So I keep some things in the back of here because it's the hardest spot to reach in the closet and that's like my cap and gown that I have to wear for graduation each year. And then I've also got some clothes that were my grandmother so they only sort of fit me. I don't wear them very often. So I have those back here. Then I make my way into more formal clothes. So again, things that are in the back that I don't need as much. And then I start getting into dresses that are more casual or dresses that I wear for work. And I end with robes. So these are all color coordinated. And then at the bottom of this, we put these dresser drawers. So we didn't actually get drawers put into the closet and they don't exactly fit, but these were really cheap and they're easy to move about. So I really did like them for that. So in here, I keep my workout gear or gym kits as they call them if you're from the UK. So that's in that section over there. And then across the way is my husband's formal clothes section. So let's spend a lot of time over here. Um, but it, I do want to mention one thing. If you have a man in your life or if you are a male and you have really broad shoulders, we got these specialized hangers from Amazon. My husband does have broad shoulders and he would always get that sort of hanger look in his sweaters where you could see where, that, where it used to hang. So we got these extra um, broad and long hangers and that's made a really big difference to his formal wear. So I really do suggest these and I will try to find the ones we got and link them down below. Besides for that, he's got his formal clothes and we organize those with his tie rack right here. And then we do his button downs in different um, color order, work our way towards suits and then the tuxes at the back. So again, his is sort of like mine where the formal wear is towards the back because that's what we pick out the least often. Then we move on to this section. This is my blazers and long cardigans. So I have my belts back here, and then I have these long cardigans that hang down this way, and those are in color order. I make my way towards blazers in order, and then it starts going into suits. I do have a lot of clothes picked out for the season right now, so this is not all of them, but if you have been watching me or following me on Instagram, at Chic Professor, you will know that I wear blazers and suits all the time and really love them, so they have their own section in this closet. And then at the bottom of this section, I have my keep all, and then in this we keep our sort of loungewear together, so our like hoodie sweatshirts that are not sort of the nice sweaters I have in here, and sweatpants, so that is there. But I also do want to show you actually what's behind here. 
So the closet goes really wide. We have a lot of extra room. And so we're only using part of it for the clothes and then we have storage behind it. So this is probably the nicest area of storage. So I will show you this. So behind the key ball, you can see I've got my boxes and desk bags and things from different luxury purchases. And we also have our luggage stored behind here. So it's really easy to get it in and out and we can pull these drawer systems out if need be as well. So this is the last section in the back of the closet and this is the section where I keep the things that I am planning on wearing in the next few weeks. So I like to pick out pretty much all my clothes for the semester, that way I'm not repeating and I get to figure out what I'm actually really excited to wear. So right now I have things picked out. I have dresses in the beginning because there's a little more room to hang them. And then I have just some different outfits and sort of in the order, back here I have things I'll probably wear with jeans or pants and then some things that are more formal. Over here, I have another little luggage piece that I have on display as opposed to stored in the back. This is a Ferragamo nylon bag, which I really like. And then below here, this is my husband's drawer set. So he's got his um, sweaters and his t-shirts in this section. So we have made our way to the handbag portion of the night. And I'm gonna give my husband a little bit of a break from doing the filming. So my handbags are in these structures that we had our contractor kind of custom make. They follow the roof line and so they get deeper as it goes down and then once it gets to the back of the roof line, it just kind of goes straight down. So they go almost all the way back, but there is a tiny bit of storage behind. And these are great and the rods of the closet are attached to these. So these are really kind of the pillar, the centerpiece of the closet. So the shelves are in different sizes. I knew that I liked small bags and big bags. So you'll see I've got my small bags at the top. These are more of SLGs. Um, the, I forgot what this one is called, but I think it's just called like the double ganchio zip around clutch or something. Uh, so that's that. The push out accessoire. I've got my Gucci bag from our honeymoon and this Prada nylon crossbody. I've got my Chanel, vintage Chanel and my two little SLGs from Ferragamo behind, um, next to that. Then coming down here, I have my gray bag. So I have the Chloe Drew in the Mati gray color. And then I have this gray Ferragamo Miss Veritote, the quilted version. And I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it because I do have this Chloe Drew, but they are very different grays. So have to see. Then we get into the totes. So I have my brown, obviously Louis Vuitton Soleil tote in the DE print. And then back behind there, I have a Longchamp tote because these do have quite a bit of storage behind them. And then I keep my most used bags at the bottom. So my Brea is currently the most used and there actually is nothing behind that right now. Besides for that, I only really have things stored behind this one, which has a few sort of special occasion kind of bags I don't use very often. Some vintage bags, something that was my grandmother's and then a Prada bag. All of this is covered in my handbag collection. I mean, pretty much there has been some changes since then, but there's videos covering some of the changes except for this one. <laughs> and I will, you know, eventually get to that one. So if you want to see anything in more detail, I will link that video down below, but otherwise there's not really much stored behind these. And then we, sorry, that was probably a little jerky. <laughs> then we get to this side. So on this side, I have basically the same structure, except that I had, um, them put in this sort of cross beam so that I could get really more use out of it. Instead of putting one bag in that space, I could put four. The ceiling is, is right here behind there. So there really isn't as much room to store behind. So it really made sense to use kind of shallow bags. So I have three Ferragamo crossbodies, the walk and two Miss Ferras. And then I have the Bayswater clutch right there, which is by Mulberry. Then we have more totes on this side. So this side is three totes big. <laughs> and so we have the Bayswater here and behind that I have two foldable travel bags, one by Gucci and one by Kate Spade. And then behind the Prada Luxe tote, I have another long shop. it's the black one and there is a strap for that behind there. And then I have my Panarea tote by Dior. And then behind that, I just keep some boots that I don't actually have room for in my shoe closet right now. And I'm not actually wearing right now, but not quite ready to get rid of them because eventually maybe the over the knee boot trend will end and I'll want some mid calf nice boots again. So those are some Stuart Weitzman's behind there. So that is the handbag collection area.
Before I move all the way on to the next part of the closet, I do want to show you how I sort of keep these bags here. So behind here I have these little marble shelves and they just go like that. And what they are are basically two marble tiles that my husband just glued together and they hold up all my bags. My totes don't need them, but all the smaller bags use them. And then in order to stuff my totes, uh, I know a lot of people use air paper and I think that's a great way to do it, but I also just use like old sheets and towels that we're not using anymore and I find that they work really well to stuff things and you can kind of maneuver them a little bit more. They're more malleable than the air paper is. So that is how I store. So the next section that we have here, which is the last section that's been built into this area, is that we have my other clothes. So we decided to actually put another rack in here. It originally only had one, but I really did want another part of hanging space. So the top section here is going to be my tops, and these are in order of color and also sleeve length. So I start with sleeveless tops, make my way to three quarter sleeves, and then make my way towards long sleeves, and then I end with cardigans. I have quite a few cardigans in lots of different colors. And then on the bottom, I have my jeans. So I have jeans in order as well. Then I work my way into other kinds of pants, dress pants, that sort of thing. And then I have skirts in their order as well. So I have one that is a little bit too long, but otherwise they tend to fit pretty well on this. And if I could move this up, I would, but because of the way that the ceiling is shaped, I can't move it up. So that's fine. And then this just ends with my sort of zip up sweaters. So that's the last part of this section. But as you can see, this is back as far as it can go just because of the pitch of the ceiling. That's just sort of what it is. So we did our best to work with that section. And if we lifted this up any further, this, the hangers would all stick out and it would kind of encroach on the walking space. So this really was the best we can do. And it fits pretty well because my stuff tends to be a lot shorter than my husband's. He wouldn't be able to have a double hanger here, but it works for me. Now we're at my vanity, which is kind of in the middle of the closet, right up between the handbags and this little last section. This is where I get ready in the morning. This is where I do my makeup. It's also where I store my jewelry and all of that. So the way that this works is my makeup is in here, brushes and things are over here. I've got tissues, which I always use. I keep these little, um, Q-tip kind of things for helping get rid of stray makeup over here and then I keep my jewelry on this side. I have a lot of my favorite things. I am allergic to a ton of jewelry but my husband buys me some nice things and so I like to have those and I really love pearls because I can wear those. So I have lots of pearl and beaded jewelry and then a few nice things of jewelry and so that's all stored over here. Then I get to this side, I really love EOS, and shout out to Chase Amy for this idea of storing these in a sort of pretty glass vase container. So that's there, and then I have this nice tray where I keep my perfume and my deodorant and sprays and things that I use all the time. I have this little Chanel napkin with it just as a little decor, I guess, from shopping there. And then I have this thick kind of foam cover over this which helps keep this vanity in really nice shape this was my mom's and so the powder makeup that I use tends to get all in the cracks so this really helps make it an easy way to clean up but it also makes me a little less worried about spilling or anything like that so I really enjoy having this cover on here then we get down into the drawers and the drawers on here aren't anything special I just keep some like jewelry I don't tend to wear very often, lots of beaded jewelry, and just some kind of knickknacks, other hair accessories, uh, my nail polish is in here, that sort of thing. And then I have a little trash can below here that's easy to pull off, and some slippers. And then I have this bench, and I will link this bench because we just got it. I will link that down below, as well as I will link anything that I kind of mentioned that you can really buy that we haven't had sort of custom made. So I like this bench because it's padded and I really wanted something that was padded to sit on and be comfortable. I also really like that it has a shelf. So this has a shelf and I just have this little storage piece in here that has all of my scarves. So that sits on the shelf here. And then my husband added caster wheels to this so that it's easier to, first of all, move this anywhere in the closet. I can use it at any place because I don't really have another chair or couch or something like that. Plus it makes it a little bit higher so it helps me to sit in it and be able to easily see myself in the mirror in order to put on my makeup. 
So that's my vanity, and we will move into another section of clothing and then end with shoes. At the beginning of the closet is this section for my husband, so he just has to kind of reach in and out. This is where he has all of his polos, which is what he tends to wear to work, as well as he has jeans on this side and all of his khakis and other like work bottoms on this side. I have color coordinated these as much as possible, but it doesn't always stay that way. He uses these black velvet hangers, and we actually had a two different closets that had different colored hangers, so I just kind of decided that his hangers would always be on black, so they are in both of his little sections, and then we had more tan hangers, so that's what I use. But it does help to differentiate when we are putting things away, and then it also helps make sure that I don't steal all of the hangers, which I'm sure he appreciates. So that is how his section is organized. We actually made this section, the other ones we had our contractor make, but this used to be a closet, and we just painted it and put some drywall in it and added another rod to add an extra section for him instead of having a closet that had to be opened. This made it a little bit easier to get in and out. At the bottom of this one is another set of drawers. These ones are actually smaller than all of the others to fit in this narrow um, width, so I will link this one as well. And we just have our pajama tops and bottoms in this drawer. So again, really easy to just reach in when we are in the closet. This is the last section of the closet and one of my very favorites. This is obviously my little shoe section. So we bought these holders, I guess, these shelving units that are actually were advertised as shoe or just general bookshelves. And we bought these off Amazon. They were a wood color and we spray painted them to be white to match the rest of the closet. But also it kind of makes the shoes pop a little bit more. So my shoe con collection is always changing and I am always reorganizing it, but I do pretty strictly follow the one in one out rule. And as you can see, pretty much everything has three shoes per shelf, except for this one shelf, which has four, because currently I just happen to have a lot of pink shoes. And I probably will actually get more pink shoes and make that a double section. If you couldn't tell from the rest of the closet, I am pretty comfortable with my color choices. I wear a lot of black, white, gray, navy and pinks and reds. That's pretty much what I have all around. And so if I buy those colors, I am sure that I am going to wear them and they will work with the rest of my wardrobe. Because we have the slant in here, I tried to be creative with my organization. And so I have my tallest boots in the tallest section, making my way down. Same thing on the brown side. So I've got a black side and a brown side. And then this back section is my ankle boots. So ankle boots are back here. Then I try to keep this whole back section as flats, sandals, and sneakers so that this is a kind of a little bit more of a casual section. And then this side and the other side are both going to be heels. And the way that I organize these is generally by color. And of course they are all heels. I do have a few wedges, but they're more formal wedges in here. So this side is really pinks, reds, nudes, and navies. And then this side, I have the most black shoes. So I have lots of black on this side, and then I have brown and metallic. But of course, depending on which shoes I get rid of in my one in, one out, I am constantly changing those up and how many go on, how many shelves are basically dedicated to each color and each type. So I will do an updated new in shoes. And I, if you're interested, please let me know in the comments from this video. Let me know if you're also interested in seeing which shoes I'm getting rid of as I am getting new ones. I do have some new ones coming. So I will show you an updated collection and then I can show you trying them on and all of that jazz. So now we're back into this part of the closet and I just wanted to talk about it a little bit more in general. So it's really wonderful to have this space. I love having a space for everything to be able to see everything. Plus, it's certainly allowed me to expand my wardrobe, though I am really good about getting rid of new things um, all the time. And really, anytime I get something new in, kind of figuring out what is going to go out. As you can see from my video from last week, we had a much smaller closet before, but I am pretty good about filling that up with things to sell when I get new pieces in. What we had actually custom made was where the handbag sections were, and then we also had these little sections added in and put the rods in there. So we have three of these sections, and then my husband and I again did that closet section. So it really did make it so that we had six sections for clothes, section for handbag, vanity, and shoes. So it's really, really wonderful to be able to organize that way, and I really appreciate 
having this space and really being able to spread everything out and organize in a way that I deem fit for my everyday life. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. I will be linking things down below so you can get an idea of something that you might want to use to help organize your space. I know we are super fortunate to be able to have this space to work with and it's been really wonderful to have and it's really great to have the storage behind here. So it really is a good use for this space. It makes it so it's something that we can both really enjoy and I definitely love, love, love having a master closet. So thank you again, and I hope you have a wonderful day.